super creative. As far back as I can remember, I wanted to be an astronaut. It didn't happen, but it's never too late to reach for the stars. Welcome to Rubservatory, where we embark on adventures in space. The moon and the planet today. As one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I got a bad feeling about this. Welcome to the first episode of Observatory. The premiere episode? The launch episode. Today, we'll be reviewing the ASI 183MM Pro by ZWO. What's this jumble of numbers and letters, you ask? It's a dedicated, thermoelectrically cooled, monochromatic astronomy camera. How cool is it? Let's find out. This camera is based off Sony's IMX183 20 megapixel camera sensor. It's extremely sensitive to light and has low read noise making it very well suited for astrophotography. The thermoelectric cooling on the chip, as well as this large fan at the back of the camera, help cool the camera down 45 degrees Celsius below ambient temperature. That is pretty cool. This is what separates an astro camera from a regular camera, even a modified one at that. The cooling will drastically reduce the noise produced by long exposure photography when the sensor heats up and we're gonna be doing some extremely long exposures. Another separation from a traditional camera is the lack of a color matrix filter on the sensor. So instead of capturing a color image, it will be black and white. Because a color bear captures color as RGGB, meaning the pixels are grouped together into one red, two green, and one blue. Now, camera sensors are designed this way because the human eye favors the color green. The issue is there's not a whole lot of green in space, so we're essentially wasting 50% of our pixels. This is not the case with a monochromatic astro camera, but because of this we're going to have to use some filters to create color images, but believe me it's worth it. Another benefit is that we can now use the narrowband filters just like the Hubble telescope to capture amazing colored gas and nebulas. Narrowband imaging is also the number one best way to beat light pollution and this can be make it or break it depending on where you live. I live in a Bortle 8 to 9 zone right in the heart of the city, so the ability to use narrowband filters, well, it makes all the difference in the world. Galaxy? Universe? You do not want to get lasered, believe me. This camera does a 12-bit analog to digital conversion and can shoot up to 19 frames a second at full resolution in video mode. It can do well over 100 frames a second in 720p. So you can do lucky imaging with this camera to capture like the planets or the moon. It has a 256 megabyte DDR3 memory cache to help data offload efficiently. And that's the main difference between this pro version of the camera and the cool version. Now this DDR memory also helps reduce amp glow. And compared to other cameras, it does suffer from a fair amount of amp glow. Now amp glow is noise produced by circuitry connected to the sensor, and it looks like this. Shooting dark frames will completely eliminate the amp glow. It'll calibrate it right out, so you don't have to worry about it. Now here's our second advantage of having a cooled camera is that our dark frames are going to match our light frames temperature perfectly. This is going to provide much better reduction of noise when we stack and integrate our images together. Now that we've looked at some of the internal specs of the camera, let's kick the tires a little bit. The camera runs directly off of USB power, but for cooling you're going to have to give it 12 volt DC power, so buy the additional adapter or you can power it with something like the ASI Air Pro if you already have one. There's one USB 3 port for connecting to your computer or capture device, and a hub with two USB 2 ports for connecting accessories like your guiding camera or an electronic filter wheel. So that's what this camera is, but who is this camera for? It's for the astrophotographer who's ready to step up to a dedicated astronomy camera from their DSLR or maybe a mirrorless camera. Someone who wants a monochromatic camera to start making use of narrowband filters, kill that light pollution. But most importantly, it's for someone who needs smaller pixels 
to make a perfect resolution match with their telescope. Now, I'll explain that a little bit. Mixing a camera with a telescope is kind of like pairing fine wine with your meal. If you're going to have a steak, go for a red. If you're going to have some salmon, a chilled white wine is probably a better choice. Now, for a star to keep its nice round shape in a photo, it has to cover a certain amount of pixels on the sensor. If it doesn't, the details in your image start to look blocky and kind of pixelated. So depending on the telescope you use, the smaller pixels on the 183, they may provide a sharp detailed image with round stars or not. There's an online tool, you can find it at astronomy.tools, and it's going to help us mix and match cameras and telescopes to determine the suitability of the pairing. Okay, in my case, I'm shooting with the William Optics Red Cat 51. So let's select that. And then we'll find our camera here on the list, and voila! We have a match made in heaven. Or should I say, a match made for heaven. At this point, I want to briefly touch on field of view and sensor size. Again, we're going to be using the incredible tools over at astronomy.tools, and we're going to pick the field of view calculator to spec out our gear before we pull the trigger on a new purchase. As a photographer, I like shooting a full frame 35 millimeter sensor. So on the Red Cat 51, the image would use the full size of the lens and have a focal length of 250 millimeters. Now let's look at the much smaller 1 inch sensor of the 183 and see the effect that this sensor size has on the field of view. Wow, that is a huge difference. The 1 inch sensor of the 183 has a crop factor of 2.7 times. That means that the image it produces appears 2.7 times larger due to the sensor only using light from the center of the image. It makes it look more punched in. This takes my Red Cat, which is 250 millimeters in focal length, to the equivalent of 675 millimeters. That is a huge amount of reach. Now the added benefit is that it's only using the center of the telescope. It punches the image in. So I don't have any need to shoot flat frames for as well as the Red Cat's already corrected, my edges are pristine. And because I don't shoot flats, I also don't shoot bias. Huge time saving, absolutely amazing. I'm now very pleased to share with you my first light images from the 183 mm Pro. This is the Heart Nebula in the constellation Cassiopeia, over 7,500 light years away in the Perseus arm of our Milky Way galaxy. I use the 183 mm Pro with the Red Cat 51, an ASI 30 F4 mini guide scope. ASI 120 mini guide cam, and the humble yet mighty Skywatcher Star Adventurer mount to capture this image. The stunning colors are the result of narrow band filters and editing them in the classic Hubble palette. I use the budget friendly ZWO new narrow band one and a quarter inch hydrogen alpha, sulfur two, and oxygen three filters in the ZWO mini electronic filter wheel. These gases are being ionized by the powerful stars at the core of the nebula that are each some 50 times larger than our sun. That image was 23 hours worth of five minute exposure, so you have to go pretty long when you live in the city like I do. Now the 183 mm Pro, it's not just great for deep sky imaging, it's wonderful at capturing high res images of the moon and the sun as well. This is shot with my Skywatcher Skymax 102, and this solar image, it was captured with my Daystar DS 60 millimeter. It's a hydrogen alpha telescope. In summary, this is a real performer of a camera. I've had mine for over a year. I've shot a ton of images and more than satisfied with the results I've been getting. If you're looking at this camera, you're probably also looking at the ASI 1600 mm Pro. And main difference is the sensor size. There's bigger pixels on the 1600 and it's all going to come down to what telescope you're pairing it with and what kind of field of view you're dealing with. So use astronomy.tools, which I've linked down below and do the calculation and put in your scope and your camera and see which one is going to have a better result. Definitely do that before spending your money. There's also a color version of this camera available, but I recommend going monochromatic. You have more control, it's more efficient capturing of light, and you can do those narrow band images, beat the light pollution, and make those amazing Hubble palette images. It's more time, it's more money, but the results are worth it, trust me. There's other manufacturers using this Sony sensor in their cameras. They probably have a 183 in the name of them. I don't have any experience with those cameras, but I would expect that they're gonna provide pretty similar uh, results, which are excellent on this camera. 
Now, I hope you found some of this information useful in your astrophotography journey, but as always, don't take my word for it. Get out there and see for yourself.